I had an irregular blemish which I bared to the doctor, and he examined me. He pressed down with his thumbnail around the edges of the small eruption, pursing his lips like an artisan at the high point of his filigree. At the beginning of a subsequent visit, the expression on his face was grave. He produced a round petri dish and showed me the small culture of loneliness spread on the agar like a blotch of jam. The colors were bright and lovely. The margins reminded me of daffodils, and the center was cherry red like a child's crayon. The doctor did not share my enthusiasm. He cleared his throat. I should not underestimate the seriousness of my condition. He told me I might not leave his office until he had made the pronouncements required of him by law and by the ethics of his profession. When do we talk about hope? I asked. The doctor looked at me with all the tenderness of a woman. He placed a stack of file folders on the desk in front of him and began to describe the typical course of my disease. Some just vanish, he said, and are last seen in the port, negotiating passage to countries they have never seen. He pulled a police photograph out of one file. A man had tied himself to a sales table and allowed himself to be ripped apart by shoppers. In another file he found an anecdotal report which told of a woman who had crept through the security gates of a refinery in the East End and climbed to the top of a waste gas discharge tower. She was halfway through a te deum when the gas ignited and reduced her quickly to ashes. The investigating detective quoted witnesses as saying that her flame was brief and fringed with delightful hues of yellow and cherry red. It begins one day, the doctor continued, when the patient awakes and says to himself that this is the day, his day, a day which must not be missed or wasted. He feels surprisingly well. He may have spent a lifetime cultivating the solitary life, yet he chooses a public place. He will have expended a tremendous effort guarding his secrets, but he chooses to give everything up to the light. He has struggled to maintain his solitary integrity, and yet what he expresses this day is, above all, his yearning to be dissolved. He dissimulates himself as a runaway among the population of a teeming foreign country. He dissolves as atoms in a blizzard of ashes, or is dismembered in a Kmart by an excited crowd. Excuse me, I said. I have a fish on the line. I closed my eyes. It wasn't a fish at all. Just one of those large sphinx moths which had somehow flown in and gotten entangled in the mosquito netting. Still, it was beautiful, and it had come in unbidden and unexpected from the outside. I quickly sketched a schematic of the design on its back and then released it again into the darkness. I thought to check my lines and rebate the hooks before allowing them to sink back into the bottomless pool of green liquor at my feet. Somebody tapped me on the shoulder. A dwarf, dressed as Lord Nelson, handed me a note scrawled in bright red crayon which read, Repel all borders. I crumpled the paper in my hand. I shook my finger at the dwarf. No, I thought, this doesn't adequately describe the doctor. To be frank, I felt rather a lot of tenderness toward him. He was simply doing his job. The doctor could not talk about hope. It wasn't his role at this time. He had been schooled to bend the particular to the general. He had no choice but to tell me about the general course of my disease in terms of probability. He cannot possibly know that I have forestalled my festal day, on a dozen occasions, precisely because I have nothing to show. I have little in common with the case histories he's pulled from his files. These were not careful. They lacked self-discipline. One day, a magnificent thing would strike my lure and tug on my line. This would be my day. Like the others, I would choose an open place where people gather. 
they might gasp, or at least look concerned or bemused as I stepped from the crowd and climbed a few feet in order to be seen. But it would not be my purpose to repent for the past, or to slip unseen beneath the surface, or disappear in a puff of smoke and ashes, but rather to draw something magnificent from a bag and hoist it triumphantly over my head, something which had never been seen before, its silver unfaded, and the cold blue of its eyes still stark and fearless. In this, and perhaps only in this, had the doctor erred in his diagnosis and in treating my case within what could be generally known. He cannot possibly know just how long I am prepared to wait.